you should be able to go into that presentation and speak to whatever ideas that you want to convey without the slides. Now, the reason why you want to take a top-down approach as opposed to a bottoms-up approach where you would start with evidence first and then talk about how it led to reason one and two and then finally the concluding idea is because in executive communication, now storylining is a technique that consultants at firms like McKinsey, Bain, and BCG do all the time. And it's basically drilled into the junior consultants, especially as they get promoted into manager roles, because most slide decks put people to sleep. And think about the last time that you sat in a presentation where somebody was presenting something to a group and there was so much going on in the presentation, so much words on the slides, maybe they had some images, and the presentation droned on for 30 minutes, 45, maybe even an hour. And by the end of it, you can tell everyone's kind of zoned out. And maybe you yourself, you've been started checking your laptop, your phone, because you're bored and you've lost all attention. Now, how do we make sure that that is not you if you have to present a slide deck at work? Well, today I'm going to share with you three key steps that I've learned from working at strategy roles in companies like BCG, which is a top management consulting firm, and Google. And these are principles that have taken me years to figure out through trial and error and really learning from some of the best presenters out there. And so today, I want to explain to you in a video that's less than 20 minutes how you can level up your presentation skills, especially in executive settings where you really need to nail the presentation. Hi. If you're new to the channel, my name's Matt, and I currently work in strategy and ops at Google. But before that, I was a management consultant, and I make these videos because I enjoy it, but I also want to share with you all of the lessons that I've learned over the years so that you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So broadly speaking, there are three steps that you should be thinking about in your head when you are preparing for a meeting where you need to present something and you need to prepare some slides. Step one is before you even open up PowerPoint or Google Slides or whatever tool you're using to make your presentation, understand what the goal of the meeting even is. Say, for example, it's a meeting with a vice president or a director of sales. What is the goal of that meeting? Are you trying to convince them of your point of view? Are you trying to say, hey, we should do things differently than how we did them last quarter because X, Y, and Z? Or are you simply trying to go in there to inform them on the last quarter's performance and it's more of a routine update? There's less convincing that needs to happen. Depending on the situation and what kind of goal you have, that's going to dictate how you run the presentation and how you build out the presentation as well, the slides. And so understanding the objective first is major key because the next step that you're going to do is something called storylining. Now, storylining is a technique that consultants at firms like McKinsey, Bain, and BCG do all the time. And it's basically drilled into the junior consultants, especially as they get promoted into manager roles, because you are making slide decks every single week for every client that you ever work for. And storylining is basically when you simply think through what story you want the presentation to tell. And based on that story, you write the titles of every single slide in the presentation before you've even made any slides or even done any analysis. Now, I know some of you listening are probably like, wow, that sounds crazy. How can you make up a storyline for the slide deck when you don't even know what the data is going to say? But the reality is, oftentimes, you can adjust the storyline. But it's important to go in to starting the presentation and starting to build out the slides with at least some kind of hypothesis of what you think the story is going to tell. And as you uncover data and new pieces of information throughout the project, you can always change the storyline. Right? It's not permanent. And so the key here, though, is you need to go through and try to write the titles of every single slide individually. And the titles should not be just like one word. Ideally, these titles should be key takeaway titles. And so they should tell a story and they should actually tell the person reading the page. If it's their first time looking at the page, they should be able to tell instantly, OK, what's the key takeaway from the page? And if they can't, then you've failed. Because they shouldn't have to look at every single detail and piece of data on the slide in order to get to their own conclusion. You want to make their life as easy as possible. This is something that 
consultants get drilled into their minds that I think a lot of people in corporate settings don't understand, which is that the point of a presentation is to supplement whatever words you're saying. It's not to add an additional layer of mental cognitive load onto the listener where they have to be doing most of the work of processing all the data and disparate pieces of information that you have on the slide and coming up with their own conclusions. You should tell them, hey, this is the conclusion. And by the way, if you want to understand how we got to that, here is all the data on the page below. Especially in executive meetings where these people have really short attention spans. You can't expect that they're going to read every single thing on the slide. And so write the titles first. And the second thing here with storylining is it's really important to not add more slides than is absolutely necessary to get the point across. Every single slide, especially in the main flow, which is all the slides before the appendix, should fight to exist in that presentation. If you're kind of questioning whether or not it's necessary, then I would instantly move it to the appendix, and you can always move it back later. But this brings us to step two, which is once you've understood the goal and you've storylined your deck, so you have all the titles written out now, and you have a good idea of what kind of pages you want to include, it's time to actually build out the slides. Now, there's a whole other video that I could make on slide design and how you can best leverage PowerPoint, or Google Slides to create beautiful presentations that impress your boss, your coworkers, what have you. But the main principles that you should keep in mind today are that each slide should build on the last one. There should not be a confusing moment where you're like, wait, why is this slide coming after that slide? The reader and the viewer shouldn't have to ask themselves that question because every slide should logically follow the slide before it. Let me give you an example. So framework slides are used extremely often in consulting presentations and in strategy roles. Now, a framework slide is just a fancy word for a page that basically lays out at a high level all the main buckets of whatever it is you're talking about today. So for example, if we're talking about next year's plan for the division that you're consulting for. The framework slide would be like their plan on a page. And so they would say, we have three pillars that we're focusing on for next year. And so your framework slide is a great example of a initial upfront slide. And the slides that follow it should all build on that framework. So for each of those three buckets, you could have a deep dive slide. You have deep dive one, two, and three. And each of these deep dive slides is basically just going in more detail, a level deeper than the framework slide. So it's not confusing to a listener or to a person in the meeting why those slides are there. Now, some other general slide design principles, though, that you should keep in mind that are all consultants at McKinsey and when I was at BCG, we were drilled. This was literally burned into our minds was that, first of all, less is always more on a slide. I think we have this tendency, and especially if you're a student or an early professional, there's this tendency to feel like you don't have enough on the page, especially if there's a lot of space or you feel like you don't have enough data. You try to start filling it in with as much stuff as you can find online. And before you know it, the whole slide is just like a wall of text. And for you, you're like, wow, yeah, everyone's going to look at my slide and think, dang, that guy, Matt, he did so much work. But the reality is that nobody is actually going to read all of that. They're just going to fall asleep, and you are basically presenting a poorly written, poorly designed slide. The best slides have less on them and are able to convey the key idea quicker because they have less. So less is more. Only include exactly what you need. And when it comes to things like data, only include the most relevant data to the main idea on the slide. Resist the temptation to throw every single piece of data onto there. Make sure you're citing your sources. This is kind of housekeeping, but you'd be surprised people don't do this. And recognize that all slides are split into four quadrants. A slide is a rectangle, and so in those four quadrants, you always have the opportunity to design the slide in such a way where it's either a single slide, or it's separated into a left-hand side and a right-hand side, or it's separated into quadrants. Now, there are other ways that you can do it too, right? Like where you can have three columns, for example, in the slide. But it's going to depend on what the main idea you're trying to convey is and what the purpose of that slide even is. Now, as I mentioned earlier, slide making design and principles are a really interesting topic that we can unpack in a completely separate video. And there really is so much to creating beautiful 
presentations. But honestly, if you don't want to get bogged down formatting every single detail and font in a presentation, especially when you are under a tight deadline at work, something that I've actually been using in my own personal projects that has been insanely helpful and saved me so much time is Gamma. It's an AI slide making tool. I've already been using them for the past year and they just came out with their 3.0 version, which is actually insane. Now basically with Gamma, you can upload a Word doc or you can even just describe to the chat what you want it to build and it'll do it in seconds. You don't have to worry about formatting or any of that stuff. That normally would take a junior analyst at BCG hours. And with the 3.0 version, there's an agent mode which basically acts as your design partner to help you format the slides exactly as what you envision in your mind. And if you're extra cracked and you like building out your own automations and workflows, they even have an API that allows you to plug Gamma into other tools that you use. So you can literally build out automations that can help you do research and build beautiful presentations in minutes. It's been a massive time saver for me. There is a free plan. You can check it out at gamma.app or I'll also include a link in the description below. So once you've prepared the slides, the last step is to actually present them effectively in the meeting. And the key here is to remember that slides are really just a tool. They shouldn't be a crutch for you to lean onto in the presentation. You should be able to go into that presentation and speak to whatever ideas that you want to convey without the slides. And with the slides, it's only going to enhance the message that you're trying to get across. It's a communication tool, not a crutch. Now, the number one thing I want you to remember that has made the biggest difference in my career when it comes to presenting in meetings is what's known as the pyramid principle. Now, the pyramid principle was developed by a woman named Barbara Minto. I believe she was a former McKinsey consultant. And this is taught at pretty much every top management consulting firm today because it's such an effective executive communication technique. The way it works is you always start by presenting the core idea and you then work your way down in a top-down manner, which means your core idea is supported by, let's say, two reasons. After presenting the core idea, you talk about those two reasons, and then within each of those reasons, you'll move even further down and you'll have supporting evidence backing each up. Now, the reason why you want to take a top-down approach as opposed to a bottoms-up approach where you would start with evidence first and then talk about how it led to reason one and two and then finally the concluding idea is because in executive communication, people have short attention spans. And it's really important to get the main idea across ASAP before they tune out or before they get distracted, what have you. And so to give you an example of how I might present an idea using the pyramid principle, let's take the country of Japan. So I went to Japan for almost a month last year, had a great experience. And if, for example, I wanted to present to a friend or to a coworker why I think Japan is such a great country to visit, I could say, hey, core idea, Japan is the best country to visit because two reasons. One, the food is amazing. And two, the public transit system is phenomenal. Now, how do I know the food is amazing? Well, I went to a bunch of restaurants. Let me show you this picture, by the way, of this amazing sushi restaurant I went to. It's, it's three Michelin stars, uh, excellent service, and evidence too. You know, I also went and had some Wagyu, A5 Wagyu beef when I was in Japan, tasted amazing. And to support reason number two, which is that the public transit system is amazing, look at this website with the historical train delays in Tokyo versus in New York City. In New York City, trains are delayed all the time, every single weekend, for 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes at a time. But in Japan, they rarely have delays. They're very infrequent, and when they are, it's only for, say, 30 seconds to a minute. And so that's kind of a rough and dirty way of presenting an idea in a top-down manner. But notice how basically I convey the main idea first. And I say Japan is the best country to visit because reason one and two, and then I have supporting evidence. And this is effective not just because it's getting the main idea across first. So if they tune out later, it doesn't matter. They still got the main idea, but also because it's providing a level of context that the later pieces of evidence and reasons are framed with. So they understand, okay, we're talking about why Japan is the best country to visit. Oh, okay, that makes sense why he's talking about food, makes sense why he's talking about public transit, right? Whereas if you do it bottoms up, you basically force the person listening to come up with the conclusions themselves as you explain it. And then at the end, 
try to figure out whether or not their conclusion matches yours. Now, the last thing I'll say here is that the other thing you should focus on is always, always, always remember, even though it is a presentation and even though you are doing a bunch of work and you're bringing this great presentation and ideas to your boss or your manager, for example, you always want to invite people to ask questions. And it's a two-way conversation. It's not just you talking to a wall. You should invite their input and their feedback. And so after every slide or after every section, create ways for them to chime in and to give their reactions or thoughts, even if they don't have questions. And you can do this really easily by saying things like, awesome, so this is how we are thinking about it and this is the analysis that we did, but want to pause here now in case anyone has any questions. And doing it just like that will invite people to give you input. And so you'll get a little bit more insight into your audience's mind and what they actually are thinking and caring about and how they're reacting to the analysis that maybe you have on a slide. And so if you make sure to, one, follow the pyramid principle in your approach to presenting, and two, invite the audience to actually engage with your presentation, what you're going to find is that the meetings that you lead are going to run a lot smoother. People are going to be impressed by how prepared you are. And you're going to have a better understanding of what your audience thinks, which is the number one most important thing to keep in mind. But anyways, as a recap, step one is always understand what your goal is and then storyline the deck. Step two is to actually build out the deck using the key slide design principles that we've talked about. And step three, finally, is once you've built that deck, to present it in a way that is tops down while also inviting the audience for input during the meeting. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.